Hey everyone, how's it going? Matthew Bailey here, and welcome to a new playlist on the on the sh channel that I that I call Winter's Story. Now, if you don't know who I'm talking about, Winter is, as you can see from the pictures on my on the other side of my screen, is a young bottlenose dolphin, um, who who is caught in a crab trap back in 2005 and and had to swim with a newly developed prosthetic tail now she has been very inspirational to me in many ways and and if you remember in a previous video I believe it was an update video I said that I would be going down to Florida at, to actually meet her and that's what this um, series is mostly about. I'm gonna be doing every episode of this playlist until the day I go down to see her and or at least the time period that I'm gonna see her which is I will be going down to Florida from July 27th until August 5th but one of those days one day in between that time period is when I'm gonna see her so I will try to upload a video for when I actually see Winter herself from down there, so keep an eye out for that video, but for now I will be doing a whole bunch of stuff involving Winter and her story, and as you can see from the video I'm watching at the very bottom of the right hand corner, this is um, the history and the mission of the aquarium that she's been in ever since 2005 which I believe was 13 years ago and she was only two months old when when she actually went down when she first got put in the aquarium so if my calculations are correct she's exactly a 13 year old dolphin now because she's been in there since 2005 when she she was Rescued in December of that year, but she was born in October, so two months. Two months after she was born, she had to be sent to Clearwater Marine Aquarium. And ever since then, her inspirational story spread like wildfire. And she has inspired so many people with disabilities, like myself. And I wanted to show my experience with you by showing you every video I know of that talks about her story starting with this one so without further ado let's watch this video and see how inspirational it is welcome to the exciting new real life series rescue clearwater based right here at your clearwater marine aquarium can't wait to go down there during the next few months join us as we go on a journey behind the scenes of our inspiring work this series is produced by, told by, and featuring your Clearwater Marine Aquarium team. You'll meet new people and hear new voices every week. Immerse yourself into the amazing world of marine life rescue. Get to know the real life people behind the Dolphin Tail movies. And that's another thing that really inspired me. When I first, the only time I knew about this was when I saw those Dolphin Tail movies. There were two that are currently out right now, Dolphin Tail and Dolphin Tail 2. And Dolphin Tail was released, I believe, in 2011, when I was only 12 years old. And boy, when I saw that movie, I got so inspired that I tried to set up a way for me to actually go see this dolphin for many years that later. And I'm finally able to do that. So let's continue watching. Are you ready? So this is the little intro for this episode of Rescue Clearwater. And I will give credit to Clearwater Marine Aquarium for these for when I watch these videos. There she is.
Ooh, look at that turtle. Marine life have one intended uninhibited and in the wild. An underwater carefree zone custom made just for them. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it hasn't always worked out that way, giving rise to those who stay. And this is actually the girl who played in both the movies, um, Cozy, um, Sir, I, I, I can't really pronounce her last name, but her name is Cozy, and she played Hazel in the Dolphin Tail movies. And if she, if you were watching this, Cozy, I, I, I just want to say Winter has really inspired me, and I want to thank you and everyone who helped on the project to inspire me to see this dolphin. Yeah, let's continue watching. And on guard for rescuers. But our core essence at Clearwater Marine Aquarium is to take these animals that need help, get them well, and get them back in the, in the Gulf of the Ocean. That's what we're about. Uh -huh. CMA is beginning to go way, way back. Hey, that was two years after the first movie. <laughs> Two thousand eight. Much further than you think. Wow, nineteen seventy eight. I wasn't even born then. Did you know a static fish display was the forerunner for the Clearwater Marine Aquarium? Check it out. I'm Dr. Edward Matthews. I'm an oceanographer at St. Petersburg College. I was one of the co-founders of the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Sea Rama actually started, I think, right after World War II. And it was in the downtown of Clearwater Beach Marina building. And they had a series of plaster casts of various types of marine life. And it was open to the public. However, uh, it was very, very commonly used then by school groups. From what I can remember, the Sierrama basically shut down, number one, because they needed more space there for the Harbor Master's office, and number two, both Captain and Cricket Harris were getting very, very old, and really were not able to continue and run the operation. So basically, the city came in and boxed up everything, uh, put it in boxes and crates, and stored it in the city warehouse and uh, left on the lake. Years after Sierrama closed down, Dr. Matthews had an idea to start a marine education center, but he needed a building. The city had their own idea. Then they called us up and said, hey, how about if we give you a sewer plant? I said, oh, what? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> we already need a sewer plant. This place stinks. But then I got to think about it. I went home that night and got to think about it. I said, well, wait a minute. So I called them back next morning. I said, tell you what, we'll take it. And so they already had been a science center. It's an old county science center. So the idea was to have them basically want to appear the majority of the to marine. So that was where I came up with the name then of Clearwater Marine. Science Center, and so it's going to be mainly uh, education. Dennis Kalberger, former student of Dr. Matthews, became the very first employee. Uh, my name is Dennis Kalberger, and I was the first executive director of the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. My vision for this place was to be uh, really a unique, hands-on educational facility. I saw you know, all the tanks. You know, they, they were at least empty at that time, and they weren't really cleaned out, and it was, it was empty. But uh, you know, we have the original floor plan, which I looked at in, in, in how we would transform this facility into an educational uh, facility. Then they went ahead then and uh, went in there and steam cleaned the tank. Got it all cleaned out. But in the beginning, it was uh, just a lot of hard work, day to day, grind, uh, no set hours, but seven days a week uh, trying to make it happen. We were also able, though, to recycle some of the stuff, and I turned it into working platforms for the first train they sold. It took years to just kind of, you know, to talk and we got the building in 78, and then I opened up the first uh, classroom in 79, started teaching the first classes the summer of 79. My name's Abby Stone. I started at Clearwater Marine Aquarium in 1996 as an animal care intern. 
Um, back in the day, I don't think this place was known on island estates where we are, you know, grounded. And back in the early days, in the mid-90s, uh, there wasn't much staff here at the aquarium, and it was just assumed that uh, if an animal came in, you would uh, stay the extra long hours and help out as much as you could? Uh, back in the day, our straining team was basically our CEO, or our, our, the executive director, the secretary, the accountant, the animal care people, the, anybody that worked here was basically on the straining team, and they did the overnight shifts. That's how it worked back then. There'd just be a handful of people, literally, in the aquarium, and you could just walk up to them and kind of give them their own uh, personal guided tour, whether they wanted you to or not. Back then, CMA was small and, you know, struggling to stay open. We didn't have the best equipment to take care of the animals. The primary reason I was hired was to do a turnaround of Clearwater Marine Aquarium. The organization had gotten in trouble over the years, financially and some other ways, some things had happened. Uh, nobody's fault per se, it just happened that way. We're really just a litany of issues, and uh, when I started, I knew they were issues, but I didn't realize how significant they were until I actually started here the first day. I started interviewing the staff, finding out all these issues, and I realized this organization really has some major, major problems. And if we don't move quick, it's likely not going to be here. So what I saw was a organization had a great, great mission and some really great people behind it. So we combine a great mission and the work we do here at CMA with great people who have a great heart. I realized there is something to work with here. And so that gave me some energy and excitement to work with. So the, these are just part of the, uh, this video does include a few commercials, but I'm going to kind of skip ahead just a little bit. Let's see, I know it's here somewhere. Here we go. So, like I said, this, these videos are so inspiring. They really help me keep going forward, especially when I meet this dolphin down there and Within the next few weeks, I will be thrilled and excited. As I'm sure you saw in the Dolphin Tail movie, CMA hit some rough He's time. the main character in the movies. excitement that the CMA mission took off. After the turnaround was complete and we reversed our fortune as we were going along, then we were able to focus on our great mission. So our three R's here are rescue, rehabilitation, and release. The three R's at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Immediately we get to the animal and we start taking respirations and we observe the animal. All the while we're on the phone with the straining coordinator who's on the phone with the veterinarian and we're explaining to the straining coordinator what is happening. Meanwhile, back at Clearwater Marine Aquarium, the interns and the people here are gathering the oxygen, the rescue bags, and we're getting the stranding van ready. The first R. Ooh, that does not look good. Our goal is to release all animals. And so when they come in and we rehab them, our primary goal is to be able to get them to the ability so they can go back into the wild. R number two. She was another good character in the Dolphin Tail movies.
Oh, look how cute that turtle is. I was only 14 years old when they released that little turtle. This was an actual event that happened. And, and they showed it kind of in Dolphin Tale 2. Fast forward a little further. I was talking to a group in New York about the possibility of doing a major motion picture. Why not think about that, right? Why not dream big? And they were having conversations after that. Same time, I got a call from uh, some individuals who are now our dear friends at Alcon Entertainment, which is a independent filmmaking studio in Hollywood that partners with Warner Brothers. They'd heard Winter's story on one of our Today Show pieces and called us up and said, we think that'd be a great story for a family film. I happen to agree. And we had conversations and that led to four years of work on the Dolphin Tale project. So when it started off, I don't think any of us really believed it was actually going to happen. This is a major motion picture and against all odds it happened. Uh, I, I can't believe that I got to work on a project not only with, with uh, Austin and David and all those awesome uh, actors and had a really great crew as well, but we did a project that really is inspiring people. And there's a lot of junk. Have you noticed there's a lot of junk out there? Dolphin Tale 1 and 2 is not that. It's something that is, can help people. You know, people want, I mean, David can tell you all about this. It's inspiring people. There's kids all over the world who are seeing Winter's struggles and challenges and how that she, she overcame it and now she's, you know, thriving in, in, in the aquarium. And that, that inspires kids who are going through really rough times in their life that they can do it too. If Winter can do it, they can do it. He's right. And then my mom came up to move Dolphin Tail. <clears throat> and so we just watched it and I just loved it. And I thought, like, I had to meet this dolphin. Well, I knew that at that point I had had one of my uh, two surgeries done, and I thought that would be really cool to go see an animal like that that could share an experience like that. She did everything just like how the dolphins can do, and I was very inspired with that. And then, you know, I went back home after that, and I did gymnastics and cheerleading, and you know, I was actually really happy that me and her had that bond. And now I've met with her. I have done more things in my life right now that I'm happy to be doing. Real life, Clearwater Marina. I'm just fast forwarding a little bit so I can. There we go. Children and wounded soldiers is simply amazing to see. Lives change every day. Hope reborn. So Winter has had inspiration for countless people around the world, especially Sergeant Russ Mayer. Today he has a really good life with his family. He comes to all our events. Whenever you ask him about Winter, he just tears up and says, "She saved my life." And this is a good um, witness of. Or a good victim of some that got inspired by winter.
my thoughts are good, thought is like I'm severely injured. I lost my right arm, right leg, and I suffered brain trauma from the impact. I don't remember much from that night. I spent 13 weeks in the coma. The doctors weren't sure I would live. When I woke from the coma, I started on life. Many major surgeries, many doctor's visits. I wasn't even sure I wanted to live. So much has changed in my life. I need an inspiration, a role model. Then I met Winter. She changed my life. I was having trouble wearing my prosthetic arm and leg. I saw her struggling to wear hers. She never gave up, and neither did I. I tell people that if Winter can do this, so can I, and so can they. With help from my family, I now live in my own home and encourage other wounded soldiers through their rough times. My family support helped me through this. Then Winter showed me I could move on. Yeah, I, and he was such a inspirational you know, story for from Winter. She even makes the same sound from the movies. Yeah, so that's basically the end of this episode, and then uh, for this episode, and in this, in the next episode of this winter story playlist, I will probably trying to react to the trailers for the movies that came out so you can know about them as well and if and if you like this episode hit that like button subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see all you dudes in the next video